Welcome to BeatSource Tech. My name is Mo Jax, and today we are taking a look at my favorite new feature in the new version of Serato DJ Pro version 2.6.0. Now, at the time of making this video, that is in public beta, so you can go and get it and try it out for yourself, but it's not a full release yet. And of course, all the regular caveats apply there. You know, it's not necessarily ready for prime time and performance use at this point, but you may well be watching this video later on, and in which case, it's a full release, and so you can get it. Either way, I definitely think everyone should give this a try. It's aimed really at DVS users, but it could well be useful for other kinds of DJs and other kinds of hardware as well. I've been using it in various forms for quite a long time, but it's not been accessible to all of the users of the software, not readily so until now. We're talking today about Silent Q. So the feature I'm talking about here is Silent Q. That is the one that's really got me hyped. There is other stuff inside this new public beta of Serato DJ Pro 2.6.0. There is new rendering using Metal on a Mac. There is new rendering in general using a, a new technology they're doing there. So it should look better than it has before. Scaling is switched up and there are a load of bug fixes as you would normally expect. But the addition of Silent Q that can be MIDI mapped that's where my excitement is really coming in because Silent Q, if you're not familiar, I, the first time I heard of that referred to was in Record Box on the DDJ XP1 from Pioneer DJ. And then with the XP2, it came to Serato DJ Pro as well. It also then appeared, I think the first mixer that had it was the Rain 70. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but from memory, that's what I think it was. So you've always been able to do like XML kind of hacks, you know, tweaking the MIDI XML files inside Serato DJ Pro. I've actually been running a, a, a tweaked XML with the S11 for a while. So I've had Silent Q on there thanks to this kind of tweaking of the XML. But that is obviously a faff on. It's a hassle. You have to do it for every single device that you use. And so now just having it MIDI mappable right there in the software, for me, that is a total and utter win. So to set it up, we need to go to the settings screen in Serato DJ Pro. Make sure that you allow Serato hardware remapping for your connected device. In my case here, it's the S11. And then we're going to go over to the MIDI tab. And we can see we've got for each deck, so you can do it for all four decks. Deck one and three, deck two and four on the right hand side. We now have Silent Q there. So I'm going to click on Silent Q. Now I'm going to move the control or touch the button that I want to use to control Silent Q on each deck. So deck one, for now, I'm going to use the left parameter button in hot Q mode. We will do a different mapping. I'll, I'll show you my preferred one later on in the video, but this is where I'm going to do it for now. I'm just going to map it there. You can see it comes up. Lighting is on, so it will light up when I hit Silent Q. So, and then we'll do the same on the right hand side. I'm going to use the outside parameter button over there for deck two. So now our mapping is done. I'm going to click MIDI, come out of the MIDI mapping, and let's load up a track and get started. So I'm going to put it into wireless mode because I've got phase on. There we go. Right, we're rolling. So let's roll up. And now when I hit that outside parameter button, silent. The deck goes mute in Serato DJ Pro. You can see it's muted there. If I want to unmute quickly, I can just hit that same button again, but I can now hit any cue point that I want. So let me load up a track that's got a few more cue points on it. Let me find one with more. Uh, let's see, this one, for example, right. So that's playing, got three cue points. So now if I hit silent cue, I can start that track or unmute it from any of those three cues. And it's as simple as that. You know, in terms of it, how it works, it is as simple as that. Let me get another track with some better cues. There we go. There's one. So again, hot cue. So if I want to drop straight into the break, I can do that. I can drop at the beginning. Back to mute, drop from the top or drop straight in there. And the thing with this is, this is now playing at full speed. You know, when you try and release something in, you know, anyone who uses turntables knows that it, you can drop something on a beat. Obviously you can, you know, DJs have been doing that forever. 
you can get the movement so you're kind of just releasing it just right to get it up to speed at the correct speed. You can do that, right? That's a thing you can do. But that involves two hands, obviously. This is the thing, that involves two hands. That involves the hand on the fader and the hand on the record. And you can do it without that as well, but it's a concentration thing. It's something you really have to think about. Whereas with Silent Q, I can hit Silent Q, the fader is open, this record's doing whatever it's doing, and I can drop something 100% on the beat with one finger. Exactly when I want to drop it. And so that's when, yeah, you're getting a second track involved. So let's get that going. Get up to 126 as well. Okay. And for example, let's say I'm playing this one and I want to drop, I'm playing this one over here. And I want to drop this one in on the beat, so a silent cue. That's now muted. And I can do, say, an, an echo out or something. And drop that one dead on the beat. I'm doing my other hand on this fader. I don't have to touch the record. And it comes in at full speed. Likewise, we can do the same thing over here. So I'll silent cue this side. And you might want to do some wiki wiki on the way out or something and then drop on the beat. And of course, you know, if you're using devices with instant start, like maybe the Rain 12s or the Rain 1 or a controller or, you know, controlling with CDJs or media players, you can drop using the play button and it will just kick in exactly on time at full speed and everything else. Obviously, you can't do that with a turntable. You can't just press start on a turntable because it's going to wind up the physical nature of the motor and, and the software when you've got like the rain 12s for example the software compensates for that it will do an instant start for you if you have that turned on with turntables with dvs that's never going to happen so just having this option to just drop something at full speed dead on the whatever pitch you've set it to from whatever cue point you want i think it's just fantastic i really do as I said there, I've mapped it to these outside parameter buttons, which I find very useful buttons for some MIDI mapped features. But I think for Silent Q, might be a little bit risky because they're so close to the main Q points. You know, there is a chance. I mean, it's a, it's a very slim chance, but there is a chance that you might accidentally mute your track and then you're in the mix and you don't know what's going on. You, your track's gone completely silent all of a sudden. Or you might press it thinking, you know, if you're in a different mode, you might use those parameter buttons and then you come back in here and you accidentally press it. It's a thing that could happen. So I prefer to be a little bit safer with my silent cue. Let me go in and remap now. So I'm gonna just hit return to unassign that one. What I like to do, the, the place I've traditionally had it set, I hold shift and push the browse knob. So again, hold, I've got to click it, shift, hold the browse knob and there it is. And same on this side, let's unassign that one. Click shift, push the browse knob. And so we'll close up the MIDI now. And so now, it's a two-step process to set the silent cue, but I'm not, I'm not in the mix. You know, I'm not actually needing both hands right now. I, I mean, I can do it with one hand, in fact, but you know, I don't need this dexterity right now because I'm not doing my transition. I'm just setting silent cue on. Now it's on. I can drop in from whenever. And so, same on the other side. Come in from one. So shift load and then my silent cue is there. I'm doing whatever I'm do doing on this one, dropping it down and drop that on the beat. So yeah, I just, I don't think you need to have it completely close at hand. It is very useful to have it accessible like this. You know, on the, on the S11, for example, there is the, um, the touch MIDI and it's in there on like page two, you know, but that, that for me is, that's too much of a hassle. That's too deep in the menu. And of course, lots of hardware just doesn't have it at all anywhere on there. At least it is there on the S11. It's just not as accessible as I would like. So from my point of view, having it just there with physical controls on the mixer, let's say I use that button there, and then I sign it cue, it's done. Drop on the beat whenever I like. And the other thing I'll note as well is that you don't have to have DVS for this. Like you, you can, obviously it's aimed at DVS because DVS users are the ones who don't have the instant start available to them, but if you're using a controller or something else, rather than doing your instant start from the start button on the, you know, on each side or whatever else, 
it might be more useful to you to have that silent cue and be able to drop from the pad itself. That might be something you want to do. So this is not necessarily tied to DVS users. Um, it could well be useful for other kinds of DJs as well, but obviously DVS users are the main audience for it. One final quick note before we wrap up, I'm aware of the technique of adding a dummy cue point at the end of a track to create a version of Silent Q. I've used it myself and I was very inspired by the video that Trey's did on this channel for us about that back in 2016. But having the Silent Q function in the software is just far superior. You can use it on any track with no preparation and you don't lose a cue point slot. But I do suggest you check out that video for a more creative demonstration of how to use it. So there you go, a look at Silent Q in Serato DJ Pro, now MIDI mappable and therefore accessible to all users. And that's the big difference here. You know, it's been in there for a while, but you either had to tweak the XML files or you just, you know, couldn't use it with your hardware. So I'm definitely glad that everyone's going to have access to that now. It's transformed the way that I perform, particularly with DVS, but also with other hardware as well. I just really like dropping tracks in with a pad. I find that a very kind of nice and comfortable way of working and so i don't want to go back to not having that so yeah i'm so glad finally that everyone's got access to this feature and can try it out for themselves let us know in the comments have you actually been using silent q with different hardware have you tweaked an xml or have you been using a similar kind of mute option in other software prior to the existence of silent q i know there have been various options out there i would love to know your thoughts so let us know those in the comments below Thank you for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it or found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.